Hey everybody, Eric Hayden here in the garden this evening. Very nice evening. I really appreciate those that have um, liked our page and subscribed here over the last couple days. I had a really neat opportunity yesterday to do a Facebook Live in the Rose Garden for the American Rose Society. Pretty neat to show off our blooms here in Eastern North Carolina. The point of the video today is to talk a little bit about deadheading. You might wonder what that term is, and it's not unique to roses. A lot of flowers do need to have their blooms, their old blooms, removed. And we're going to talk about why you need to do that. We're going to talk a little bit about how um, by deadheading properly, you can remove disease issues from your garden, potential pests, and also how by deadheading on time, you will actually see new blooms down the road quicker. So it's certainly a good thing to do. Stay tuned. Once we get past the part on deadheading, we're going to talk a little bit more um, about our garden right now. I want to show you two blooms. Uh, Let Freedom Ring and Zach Nobles are really looking very nice in the garden this evening. So this is going to be a pretty quick video. Um, as far as deadheading goes, again, it's nothing unique to roses. Uh, any type of flower often needs to be deadheaded. And all that means is when you have a bloom that's past its peak, like this Gemini, it's time to remove it. Um, so that's when you want to do it. If a rose looks good like that or like that, you don't need to do it. But when it's not doing it for you in the garden, when it's looking old and the petals are falling off, it's time to remove it. So that's when you know you need to deadhead. It's gonna depend on the variety. Some lighter petal roses uh, with less flowers uh, may need to have it done sooner. And a variety like this that has a lot of petals, it may not need to be deadheaded right away. So it's just gonna depend. Another telltale sign, you've got petals in the garden. That meant that you waited a little too long for some of those varieties and they've already deadheaded themselves, the leaves or the petals have fallen off. So when you need to do it is when the uh, blooms are past peak. Now we get a lot of questions, where should you cut the old bloom off? And don't make it too complicated. I'll use this nice bloom here as an example, but of course we would wait for that to die back. The tradition is to go down to the first set of five leaves. So this is a set of three, this is a set of three, uh, here's my first set of five leaves. That's where I would want to make my cut, right above that first set of five. That often gives you the strongest cane coming out of that. I'm going to show you that in an example. So if you want to do it by the letter of the law, go down the first set of five leaves. But I often say, just don't worry about it. The whole point is to remove the dead bloom. That's all that matters. So for me, especially if I'm not preparing for a rose show, if I'm preparing for a rose show, yes, I go down to the first set of five leaves. If I just want a dead head, just take the bloom off. Just go to the first set of leaves, whatever it is, and just cut that bloom off. Um, the reason why I do that, especially in the summer, I want as many leaves on the plant as possible. They're solar panels, they're getting, uh, getting uh, energy for the bush itself. So even though these are sets of two and three, it's better to have those than really cut the bush uh, much lower than I want to be. So set of five, set of three, do what you want. Uh, if you're doing a row show, maybe it's important, but otherwise just cut the bloom off. Uh, that's the most important thing. Now, why do we do this? Um, the reason is these blooms may have some disease with them or they may have some pests. And if those petals fall down into the garden, those diseases and pests are laying on your rose bed and you could potentially have some issues. So that's one reason why we do it. Um, what diseases are we talking about? Well, in the lighter colored roses, you're talking about thrips. So any of these white and uh, roses, especially yellow roses, down in the bloom itself, we have the little things that are crawling around. Of course, I can't see them now. Um, usually I have tons of them on, on my roses, uh, but we do have a thrips issue. You can see some small ones here. Um, some of those are dead from my spray, but if I hold still, that is a thrip right there. Um, but those are in the garden. Um, they're on your blooms. So if you remove those, that's one good way to get rid of some pests. I mentioned disease. Um, a rose like this, a fern, can get botrytis um, because it is balled up. It's such a heavily petaled rose. Um, so you want to get those spores out of the garden. So the reason you deadhead, two reasons to reduce pests in the garden and also disease. The third reason is these roses will bloom sooner the quicker you deadhead. And this is what I mean by that. Um, we'll start off with, let's you know, say that you properly deadheaded and you um, 
remove the blooms or perhaps you gave some away to a neighbor. This is our first set of five leaves on Mr. Lincoln and I cut this um, probably a week or two ago, maybe 10 days ago. And look at that bud eye right there. And that's gonna be your new cane. So by removing the bloom, you're going to have a new cane quicker than if you just let it stay on the bush. And in some of them, Mr. Lincoln's kind of an early bush for me, you can see where that bud eye is poking out. So the three big reasons, um, reduce pests in the garden, um, reduce disease, and again, it will start your next cycle of bloom. And what I mean by that is roses tend to bloom every five to seven weeks. If they have a lot of petals, like Dolly Parton, it might take more toward the seven week mark. But roughly every five to seven weeks after these blooms are gone, a new set will come back. And we call that a flush and a cycle of blooms. If you're good about your deadheading, it will be quicker. Um, if you don't deadhead, it could take an extra couple weeks. Now, you might say, Eric, what happens if I don't deadhead? Am I not going to have any roses uh, five to seven weeks later? The answer is no. Um, again, it might be delayed, but Mother Nature takes care of itself. Um, you know, we didn't always have people out there deadheading, and things still survived in nature. So this is uh, Mr. Lincoln. The, the petals have fallen off. Uh, what will eventually happen is this will die back, this cane, and you will get some growth from those bud eyes. You can see they're already starting to push out anyway. So Mother Nature will deadhead itself um, in terms of blooms. But again, the process takes a while. You have to wait to go from that to that, to that. And it could be a week to two weeks uh, until you start to see those bud eyes pushing out. Whereas if you take that bloom off on a prompt style, um, it will be much quicker with your cycle of bloom. So we recapped where to cut, set of five or three leaves. You can get picky if you want. If you don't want to, just cut uh, the dead bloom off. That's the most important part. Just remove the, the bloom itself. That's what's important. The reason why you should do it, again, it reduces pests in the garden, um, the potential for disease, and also will promote more blooms quicker for your next go around. Last thing I want to show you before we show you some blooms, what should you do with your old roses? Put them in a bag, trash bag, and throw them away. I am a huge believer in compost. I pretty much put everything in my compost pile, um, weeds, vegetation, soil. Um, but the one thing I don't put in there is much from my rose garden. And it goes back to if this is a diseased rose, um, if we've got some botrytis on here, if we've got some thrips, I'm keeping it near my roses by putting it in the compost pile. So that's one of the few things I actually throw away. So I've got this real, real big bag. I love it. Uh, my parents got it for me. I use it for weeding. It has big straps on it that you can carry around. And I just fill that up with the old rose blooms. So comment below, what did you think of this presentation? Again, this was all about deadheading. We covered why you should do it, uh, how you should do it, and how it can really help out your blooms uh, in the garden for down the road. We're gonna end with roses because that's why we grow them. Uh, this is really, really nice. This is um, Let Freedom Ring, brilliant red color. Um, it's often later in the garden in terms of blooming. And what I mean by that, you see that most of my garden, uh, some of the blooms are getting past peak, like Gemini over there. Whereas Let Freedom Ring, this is actually one of the first couple of blooms on the bush. Lots of buds yet to come. So it's later in the season that it blooms. Uh, we've talked about um, sports before. This is Sport of Let Freedom Ring. Uh, this is Zach Nobles. And we'll compare the two. On the right, a little taller, red rose. That's the original. And on the left, at least in my garden, a little shorter, but just like Let Freedom Ring, very, very long canes, excellent vase life, and excellent form. It's got more of an orangish uh, tone to the red. Um, and again, you, can you beat that? A lot of people say hybrid teas are hard to grow. And they are, but if you put the care in, what's going to beat that rose? Uh, nothing at the floor shop. Nothing against floor shops, but uh, it's like a homegrown tomato at the farmer's market versus something you get in the middle of the winter. Nothing's going to beat that. And I showed you a uh, hot princess yesterday, tremendous amount of blooms. And they look small initially, but again, they are opening up. It's a florist rose, and you can see why um, it holds that circular spiral shape to it and I'm looking at the camera and it's just not doing it justice to this pink. It's a very vibrant pink, uh, very, very nice and you can see the long stems on it 
um, just spectacular. So we'll wrap things up. Um, while I do that, I got to do some deadheading myself. There's a couple nice Gemini left, but most of these are certainly seeing their better day. Appreciate the new subscribers. Um, again, your greatest uh, thanks for these videos or appreciation comment. Let me know how I'm doing. Um, and share these with other Rosarians. I think this is a really good platform for sharing what's going on in the garden. This is uh, Sunny Sunday, so I'll end with that one because that's certainly a spectacular one. Hope you're doing well, staying healthy, and we will see you again in the garden.